Right, we do want to warn our viewers this next story contains graphic details that may be disturbing. The family of LaShawn Thompson is suing a jail in Fulton County, Georgia, after Thompson was found dead in this filthy jail cell with more than 1,000 bed bug bites all over his body. His family says that medical staff at the prison ignored his declining health and ultimately refused to administer CPR when his body was found. Joining us now to discuss is attorney Ben Crump, who is representing the family. Ben, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Natasha. Uh, ben, I have to tell you, these photos uh, photos are some of the worst that I've ever seen, and there are ones that we can't show on air of the condition of his body and just how infested with insects that he became. Can you help describe for us what condition was he found in? Well, when you look at the cell, Natasha, it is clear that this was a human rights violation. I mean, the prison cell, as deplorable as it was, the pictures of his body taken by the Fulton County medical examiner was far worse. I mean, he had bed bugs and lice all over his body. He had bed bugs in his mouth and his nose and his eyes and his ears. And you could just imagine the miserable, God-awful death that he suffered. Uh, other inmates said that he was crying out for help at times, but yet None of the law enforcement officials helped him there at the Fulton County Jail in Atlanta, Georgia. And it's sad that this is what they call the psychiatric ward of the Fulton County Jail. He had mental health issues. He wasn't a criminal, a hardened criminal, anything. He was, like so many other American citizens, suffering from mental issues. You know, and his family says that he was essentially eaten alive by bed bugs and that the prison refused to give a CPR when he was found. Can you tell us what has this been like for the family and what does justice look like for this family? Yeah, it's been God awful. Um, they looked at them uh, before he went into jail because, like I said, he had mental issues, uh, diagnosed mental issues, and they tried to look at them while he was in jail for those three months, but they couldn't get any communications with the jail officials, uh, you, you look at that cell and you scratch your head and you say, this is America. I mean, Brittany Griner over in the Russian prison, I, I don't think had as deplorable uh, prison cell as we're seeing here in Atlanta, Georgia. So what they want is to get some measure of justice and accountability, not only for LaShawn Thompson, but also for other uh, people in Atlanta, Georgia, who might have mental illnesses and get uh, arrested and put into these conditions. So that's why we're fighting to say that we won't let them pass the baton. We want justice for LaShawn. Yeah, how liable is Fulton County for what happened uh, to LaShawn? And have they said that they have done anything so far to prevent this from happening again? Well, you know, the sheriff uh, came out and he said that uh, three of the head officials at the jail were released. However, we understand that, you know, this uh, infestation of bugs and roaches was a problem that had long been complained about. So the board of county commissioners and the sheriff are pointing the fingers at each other when the reality is LaShawn Thompson's blood is on all their hands, and they said they want to do right by the family. We will see. The medical examiner said he cannot determine a cause of death, which has us bewildered. But Colin Kaepernick and his foundation has agreed to pay for a independent autopsy on behalf of LaShawn Thompson's family. Yeah, and, and I do want to ask you about that. Sorry to interrupt. So, yes, Colin Kaepernick is saying he will ha help pay for that independent autopsy. How important is that autopsy? How soon could we see those findings? It's critical, and we hope in a couple of weeks that the medical uh, examiner or the pathologist who is looking at all the slides taken from the first autopsy to try to determine the cause of death uh, can come forward. Other than that, we may have to exhume his body. Uh, but Natasha, we believe that uh, people have opined that it's very likely that these bed bugs 
got into his mouth and his throat while he was sleeping, and he asphyxiated and drowned on his vomit. That is one of the things they believe is most realistic, because he was a hefty, young, 34-year-old man. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.